One of the most anticipated Yeezy boosts of the last couple years is finally releasing this month in August 2023. I'm happy to say it's pretty decent. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Granite. So we've been seeing leaks of this shoe and images of this shoe since the middle of last year, maybe even earlier, and obviously because of everything that went down between Adidas and Kanye West, while this shoe was supposed to release at the end of last year, they're finally releasing it now alongside tons of other Yeezys in August 2023. And while I'd love to say this shoe was worth the wait, it's just kind of a standard Yeezy Boost 350 V2, and if you were looking forward to this shoe, great, you can finally grab it. However, the problem is, because we were forced to wait so long, and because this is probably one of the last Yeezy Boost 350 V2s to ever release, the hype on this shoe has increased. Now, that doesn't mean that this shoe is going to resell for tons of money, it just means that if you miss out on a pair of these guys, unfortunately, you will probably have to buy them at resale instead of having them sit in stores like 350s were doing last year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it happened. And that also means, because you might have to buy these shoes at resale, you're going to have to pay over retail because you're going to have to pay things like fees. StockX has a fee, Goat has a fee, eBay has a fee. They all have fees. All that to say, you might have to spend like 20 or 30 more dollars on this shoe than you would have if they had released last year. That being said, the good news is if you're willing to buy these shoes right when they release, you shouldn't have too hard of a time because they're releasing a lot of stock at places like Takeout and Y, which is linked in the description below, and also on the Adidas Confirmed app. We've also got Apothecary no-show socks dropping this weekend on Apothecary.com, which are perfect for Yeezys because they sit just below the Yeezy ankle line and they never slip off your feet. Plus, they're super comfortable. And actually, speaking of the release, these shoes officially release on August 14th for a retail price of $230, which seems to be the standard price for Yeezy Boost 350 V2s at this point. It used to be $200 and then $220, and now it's $230. I guess to be fair, it's not going to be the retail price for these shoes much longer because we're not getting any more. I've got to be honest, over the last probably year to two years, I haven't really worn any 350 V2s regularly just because there are so many other shoes releasing that in my opinion are more exciting. And that doesn't mean in any way that they're bad shoes, they've kind of become like Air Force Ones. They're very common, very easy to find, and even non-sneakerheads rock them. And this Yeezy 350 sock shoe style, while initially very polarizing, has become a very standard look for sneakers. In fact, for years Adidas was making shoes that looked very similar to this, and that was pretty much all they released. And now in 2023, it seems like that promise that Kanye made back in 20. 2015 is finally true. Everyone who wants a pair of Yeezys can pretty much grab them. Maybe for resale, but resale is not too bad. But there still is definitely a following behind 350 V2s, whether that's people who missed out on pairs years ago when they were incredibly popular, or people who just like the design or the comfort of the shoe. And in my opinion, out of all of the colorways of 350 V2s that have released over the last couple months, and even maybe the last couple of years, this one might be the best. Now, of course, that's my own personal opinion, but I really do love this colorway, and I feel like it's one of the better colorways to drop in a long time. But diving into the new 350 V2 Granite, the latest Yeezy Boost 350 V2 to release, you'll notice that the upper of this shoe is actually very similar to the original 350 V2's upper. Even though we've had countless variations of V2 uppers, the original upper is still my favorite. And when you compare it to the original Beluga 350 V2, you'll notice that they've still got that classic stripe on the side. The knit pattern's the same, even though they're really only using two colors of material on the upper of the shoe versus like three or four. And there's something about the simplicity of this shoe that I really like. Now I'm currently working on my review of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 MX Dark Salt. And compared to this shoe, you can see that the upper of the shoe went a lot crazier. Even though it's really only like grays and blacks and things like that, there's just so much more going on in this shoe than this shoe. And I just prefer the simplicity of this shoe. As I mentioned before, the upper of this shoe is almost identical to that of the original 350 V2. It's made up entirely of prime knit. However, you've got different knit patterns woven into the upper of the shoe. A majority of the prime knit material comes in this sort of greenish gray, which I actually really like. Online, the images made it look a lot grayer than it actually is. When you see it in person, or hopefully the way that you see it in these B-roll images, because they are color corrected, so it may or may not look exactly how it looks in person, it's a much more greener look than I expected. Running down the lateral side of the shoe, you have that classic SPLY 350 stripe that sort of pixelates towards the toe and towards the heel of the shoe. Of course, it comes in one solid black, which I really like. It's funny because years later, after these shoes first released back in 2016, there's been no definitive answer on what SPLY stands for. I think it stands for supply. I don't know what else it could stand for. I know there's some other people who have come up with uh, some other phrases, but I really think it stands for supply, although it is missing a P. But at this point, I guess we'll never know. On the medial or inside of the shoe, even though the knit comes in just one color, you can still notice that wavy pattern that you have on the belugas, just because it's actually knit into the material that way. Running down the center of the shoe, you have that knit detail that 
holds the two halves of the sneaker together. It's also present on the back of the shoe. And then weaving over top of that, through the upper of the sneaker, you've got these sort of greenish gray rope laces. Around the top of the ankle opening, you've got this matching piping detail. And on the heel of the inside of the sneaker, you've got the Adidas three stripes in this reflective material. The insole of the shoe comes in a matching greenish gray color with the Yeezy and Adidas branding printed on the heel in black. And as far as internal construction for this shoe, it's exactly the same as every other pair of 350 V2s. Now one detail I am kind of interested in is when this shoe was actually produced. Now if you look at size tags on a lot of different sneakers, whether it's Yeezys, Adidas, Jordans, whatever, they usually feature a date on there and that's the production date. So in this case, it looks like the production date for this shoe was May 2022. So this shoe was produced over a year ago. And that makes sense because this shoe was supposed to release at the end of last year. So I'm not surprised that this shoe was made back then. So it really was sitting in a warehouse for the last year because of the whole Kanye and Adidas saga. As far as sizing and fit, the granite seemed to fit the same as most of the other current 350 V2s. For me, I usually go true to size because I like more snug fit. Adidas does recommend going up at least half a size. So that's something to keep in mind. At this point, I'm assuming that you already have pairs of 350 V2s. So go with your standard size. However, if you don't, follow Adidas's guidelines and go up half a size. I think that's probably the safest bet. The problem is, if they don't fit you, you can't return them. So keep that in mind. You shouldn't have too hard of a time selling them though if they don't fit you, but you might lose a couple bucks. Continuing down on the shoe, you get to that iconic 350 V2 ribbed midsole. It's probably one of the last times I'm going to say that. Not mad about that. I've probably reviewed like 60 pairs of Yeezys over the last couple of years, but uh, it's going to be sad to see these guys go. The material that they use on this rubber seems to match the upper of the shoe. However, it is semi-translucent, so you can see through to the boost midsole underneath. And then finally moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this matching rubber on the outsole. And of course, you've got the cutouts to the boost. Personally, I think the Granites are one of the cleanest 350 V2s to drop probably ever. Maybe that's because I love muted colors and this is definitely a muted color, but I do like the fact that they went back to their roots with this shoe. Like it really is the same construction as an original 350 V2. So I like that. I like the callback. I think that's cool. And I like the simplicity of the upper of this shoe. But let me know your thoughts on this shoe in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.